Yesterday I played in the chess.com titled Tuesday, which is a blitz tournament with a pretty nice prize fund, so every week some of the strongest grandmasters in the world compete in it. I had my best score ever, 8 points out of 11, and in the penultimate round I played against the grandmaster we all know and love, Vidit. And that's why I wanted to share this game with all of you. I surprised them early in the opening and it led to a completely insane battle. You can check the timestamp in the video player to first take you through my view of the game and then the analysis afterward. And before we jump into it, I just want to say I have a tremendous amount of respect for Vidit and people told me after that he didn't have the best tournament, he was exhausted and he wasn't in the best spirit. So I didn't make this video to brag. I hope you guys understand that. I did it because I want to take you through my nervousness, the emotions and share the instructive moments of the game. So let's do it. What a way to end Title Tuesday! A date with Vidit! So much respect for Vidit! Oh, let's go! Oh my goodness! Is it, I think Vidit's gonna go G6. Everybody plays G6. Let's see. Is Vidit gonna play into prep? Okay, so he's playing d6. I'm gonna go d5. I don't actually even remember what I'm supposed to play here. Let's take as much space as possible. Wow, what is that? That's so... passive. The strange move. If knight f6, maybe I just go straight after Vidit. Is he gonna go like e? I think he's gonna go g6. Should have maybe even considered c4. Yeah, no, I, yeah, Vidit is not. I mean, this is a very surprising score for somebody like Vidit. He's extremely strong. Let's go c4. Try to, try to jump him with my pawns here. Can also go here. I have some ideas. e5 here, knight b5. Take on e5 a second time. If here, here. I can also just go knight b5 now. I don't know if this is very good, but we'll see. Russia or India? Maybe. It does feel that way sometimes, but that's that's just chess, man. I mean, nothing anybody can do about that. I'm basically just hoping that Vidit miscalculates something here. Because it's a, it's a really, really weird position after knight b5. Okay, he plays queen b6. I can just go for it. I mean, I really like that move, actually. <laughs> It, it, it strikes me as a very natural move. So knight g4 threatens mate. Which I don't think I'm going to hang. I, I didn't hang it. We need two. And now I've got this coming if I want. And I'm going to go h3 next. I think my position here is very good. Very interesting system here. Um, e6 also a consideration obviously the best move for me right now is ed6 and knight c7 so he takes but now i have a free move see now i can go is he gonna go here is that is that vidit's plan also can take the thing is when you play these gems you get so nervous you get so damn nervous because they're so good you don't want to screw up you know nerves are a real thing man right so he's going for this that's a fascinating idea. What if I just take... Like this. And then go bishop to e3. Oh my gosh. This looks so bad for him. There's no way he can... What? My rook is just hanging, but like... Oh my god, what? But the thing is, I don't know what to play. <laughs> it all looks so good. Knight d6. 
And bishop b6 doesn't actually win his queen. Bishop d4 takes, takes. He seems pretty safe. What if I just... Just for this move, don't do anything crazy. If castles, I think queen h2 is very strong. Okay. F5. F5 takes g5. Let's do it. That looks really nice. F5 takes and g5. Because that would be really bad for him. I feel like this move is good, but... Let's go rook d1. Just going to try to consolidate in the center of the board here. Not really worried about queen a5. I don't, I don't feel like that move is that scary. Okay, king f2 to stop queen g3. Now, now is when champions are made. Or otherwise. That might be the biggest bluff ever. I don't actually know if that move is good. It just... It looks right, but I have no idea. Maybe queen d2 and bishop h6 was better. It's so tough to say. I could just scare him. Wow, he takes. Is he looking for this? What is he looking for here? Knight takes g4. King g1 or something? No, no, knight g4 I think I have to take. I have no idea. Absolutely insane position. Maybe I could have even played bishop g2. King g1 takes, knight g7, king g7, fg4. Oh my god, I'm gonna beat Vidit. Oh my god, I'm gonna beat Vidit. Oh my god, we did it! We did it! Oh my goodness, we actually beat Vidit! Oh my god! My heart is pounding. I almost didn't play the move Bishop H6. Oh! Holy! Oh my god, that's nuts! Oh, what a way to end it. I mean, I have so much respect for Vidit. I, that, that, like, he's so good. Oh my god, I'm shaking. Oh my god. Oh. So, as promised, now it's time to analyze the game. Obviously, as you can see from my emotions during the game, I have since calmed down, changed shirts, and it's actually Wednesday now. So in the game, I played e4, and Vidit responded with the Sicilian. Now, I played a move, which is on the thumbnail, and that move is a3. I like a3 a lot. It's a very tricky line. It doesn't get played in classical because black has a few ways to, to equalize and get a totally okay position. But um, the benefit of surprising an opponent so early on, look, I'll show you. If we take a look at Vidit's main account, uh, Vidit Chess, he plays 70 games of the Sicilian defense with the black pieces. Not a single one of these games features the move a3, and on the account that I played him on Vidit YouTube, uh, the same story. So it's the only time he's had to face the move a3, uh, in, in, I'm sure it's not, he, he's seen it before, but the point that I'm trying to make is playing these sidelines against very highly theoretical openings will serve to your benefit because you will know the tricks of the position. So Vidit played knight to c6, um, the, you know, the best line is g6 and bishop g7, which is actually what I expected as you saw. He played knight c6, 
And now this is essentially a gambit where I take the full center. Um, and these two pawns are gone. And there's a line here, which you saw me pre-move during the video, where if, if black plays d5 here, black can get in a lot of trouble after take, take, and knight to a3. There's a lot of tactics here with knight b5, knight c7, and this position is already extremely dangerous for black. Vidit went a little bit more solidly with d6 in the game. And here, normally I just, you know, take the full center with four pawns, but I said, let me go after him. You know, I'm going <clears> to <throat> start to push him back with my pawns. Knight f3, queen c7, and everybody stands very nicely. In a, in a dream situation, you know, I, I put all my knights, I put my knights, my bishops out, and I'm, and I'm ready to go. And knight f6. But I couldn't resist the urge to strike. And generally, when I'm playing super GMs, and Vidit is number 25 in the world, he's at his highest classical rating ever, what I like to do is I like to, I like to attack them, and I try to throw as many punches as possible, because if they, if they get to play a long positional game against me, they have the advantage. They also have the advantage in the end game, and that's why I like to come out swinging and try to take their head off. Doesn't matter who I'm playing, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So I went knight b5, and then just went after him with e5, and Maybe I'm not in a position to be able to do this, but both of us have our kings in the center, and essentially all I'm looking at here is, is my king weak? And when he plays knight g4, I mean, he's literally threatening mate. Now, in the game, I played the move queen e2, but actually, I can play a move here, queen d4, which is crushing. This is a really, really, really strong move. Um, and it's actually the same thing. If Vidit had taken and then played knight g4, I have queen d4. And so, queen d4, the, the point is this. If he takes me, I take like this, and knight c7 is actually really difficult to stop. Like, he can play rook b8, but then I'm going to kick this knight out, and then I'm going to continue to just destroy the position, not to mention that a7 is a weakness. So queen d4 would have been, would have been a very nice move by me. I, I didn't even think of it. I mean, I, I saw that it was possible, but I was like, no, queen e2 defends this and defends this, and it must be the right move. Um, so then this happens, and now... I don't just go and take back, and, and I could have just taken back, but I didn't like the fact that all of a sudden, you know, he's swarming me and he's going to castle, and I figured, okay, I need to, I need to throw in this move, an in-between move, and Vidit finds the best move. If he just moves his knight back, then I take, and he's unhappy, so he, he uses the pawn that I didn't take, pushing it forward and counterattacking me. Now, of course, I didn't take. Let's not forget about the f2 square, right? That's what my queen is trying to guard, so I took, took, and here again, why didn't I take with the queen? I don't know. Um, I honestly thought during the game that GF3 was better. It felt right, and I, and I was correct. Uh, the engine does prefer this. I think I thought that long term, if he castles, I'm going to have queen h2, which I don't have if I play queen f3. Although if I play queen f3, then I have queen h3. So, you know, I, I guess it was just something about keeping my pawns together like this and fighting toward this side of the board. I don't know, but the engine likes it. So, but both are probably okay. And here, you know, rather than moving my rook out of danger, I counterattack Vidit with bishop to e3. I thought that this was the best move. The engine prefers putting the rook on a3 because it's the computer, and frankly speaking, it should drink alcohol less. Like, I don't know, man. I don't know why I want so bad to play rook a3. You can't even go over here. There's a pawn in the way, so stop it, computer. Lay off the, uh, lay off the booze. Anyway, at this point, I was, I was blown away because I'm like, how do I not have something? Like, I want to go d6. I want to do all these things. Nothing. Nothing. And normally, trading a bishop like this is good for white, but I, I couldn't find a way to make it work. Like, I thought that if I trade, I don't know where my attack is. I mean, Vidit's just going to come back with a queen. Um, all these different considerations, so I decided to play knight d4, knight f6, and then this move f5. As you saw from the video, had he taken, I would have played g5, and I would have had a very strong attack, because now his knight cannot go here. That's actually the main reason why you don't go g5 because the knight will come to h5. And you also destabilize your, your pawns if you do that. So castles, and I just played rook d1. I mean, just getting the bishop out of the way. The engine here really likes queen h2, just going there immediately. And now the only thing protecting black from dying is the knight on f6. Um, you can't get rid of it with this, because again, there is this move, but there is bishop g5. Um, but I played rook d1. Now Vita plays queen d6 because he wants to play bishop to d7, but he doesn't want to block his queen. He plays queen d6. And again, uh, I play king f2 because of this, but the engine does like queen d2, just going for bishop h6, bishop d7. Now, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. I felt like I had no more moves. I mean, if I play g5, he just goes here, and like bishop h6 is a terrible move because 
it's a terrible move because this is not the piece you need on that square. You need the queen there. The queen has to be on h6, not the rook. I mean, if this, then he plays like queen here and he just gets me out. So I didn't know what to do and I just, I just played C. I said, screw it, you know, c5, let's go. Vidit took my pawn. You know, he, he took the right pawn because had he taken here, he runs straight into my bishop. Knight e6 hits three pieces and the bishop hits the queen. So he took the, he took the right way. And I played knight e6. Now, knight e6 is a terrible move. Apparently, here I'm supposed to, again, engine is a psycho and wants me to just go here and set up a new attack on the piece. But, I, you know, as you saw, I was very low on time. I just did this. Now, the queen is hanging. The bishop behind the queen is going to be in my sights. This is going to be in my sights. This is going to be in my sights. And now he played knight takes g4. So first, this is what I missed. And this is why I went down to three seconds. I thought here, take here, here, and I end my thought process. As you can see from the highlights, which I prepared before the video, it's not so clear because even though the queen is hit, uh, this position is winning for white, ex except for one move, which is winning for black. So it's not winning for white. And that's why you always need to look for checks. Black plays this move, which a lot of amateur players might miss here, including myself, but I did see it at the end in my defense. And now black is out of danger because black gets to take the knight. And once black takes the knight, we get a position where white just doesn't have enough material uh, and is just completely lost. So I missed that. And when he played knight g4, I was like, well, I can't take, so I got to move my king. Where do I move it? Where do I move it? And I finally decided to move it to g1. And my logic was I protect my rook. My rook is protected. Now I'm threatening to take the knight, to take the rook, to take the bishop, and to take the queen. And if he moves his queen and takes my pawn, which is what he did, it's by far the most natural move, then I take on g7 and I hit, his, I hit his queen, and then his knight is still hanging. That was my logic. You guys are not ready for this. In this position, um, there are two moves for black. One of them is so savage, but it makes sense. In chess, you have something called danger levels. And what it means is that if your piece is under attack, you can ignore it and counterattack the opponent with a, attacking a piece that's worth the same or more. If I'm attacking Vidit's queen here, he can attack my queen or my king. Those are the only two things that he can attack that would make sense. Well, he only has one way to attack my queen, and that way is bishop to b5. And that way wins. That is apparently the only winning move, because if I take his bishop, he goes here. And if I take the queen, he now gets my queen. That's hanging. That's hanging. And, you know, if I take back, like, he just goes here. And then this. Uh, my position falls apart. He is up, I don't know, a million pawns. So bishop b5 would have just saved the game. Um, I can probably move my queen like, I don't, I, I actually can't move it anywhere because if I go here, defending my rook, then he takes. And I'm dead. I'm just dead. I mean, I'm, he, I cannot defend against all of these threats. And the bishop, and, you know, I can take a rook here, but I'm, I'm gonna lose. Um, I didn't see bishop b5. I saw it after when I analyzed. And the second move is queen here. Just the queen here, and as you can see again from all those arrows, I, I can take four different pieces, and, and it's, it's chaos. Uh, it's chaos, it's chaos. Because if I take his knight, for example, uh, he has the move bishop to a4. Uh, which attacks my rook. I, 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 I don't know, I don't know, okay? I hate computers, you should hate com We all hate computers. Anyway, queen takes f5 is what he played in the game, and here I thought I was a genius by uncorking knight takes g7, and then he played this. And I was like, whoa, what is he doing? And I just took his knight. Now, apparently, the best move is bishop here. Taking his knight is apparently a mistake because Vidit could have just taken back, which, of course, I did not see at all. The logic being that if I take here, look at this engine line. Here, take, here, threatening this, h5, rook d5. Defending the pawn, because if I let him take the pawn, he has six extra pawns for a bishop. Which is not good. And then something like this. I disregard the attack on the rook. Queen h6, and, you know, rook d7. And Anjin is saying white is plus 0.8 or something. I don't know, okay? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. None of us saw that. We both had, like, five seconds. Instead, I just took and he went here, and this looks like it's all working for black because I'm going to struggle to defend here. But remember danger levels? I can counterattack his queen while there is an attack on mine. 
So I move my queen back here. And the logic is that, yes, he's got my rook, but his queen's in danger. And if he takes, now my rook moves out of danger. This queen e1 move saves the game. Because basically, if I play like queen d2, he takes my rook and I can't even take back because my bishop no longer has a guard. Now, apparently, I can play the move rook h3 here, hitting the queen, defending this, and I mean, but like, you get what I'm saying. Queen e1 here saves the game. It keeps everything together. And then luckily, on top of that, I also have this. That's why you always look for checks. You'll notice I saw that move immediately when the game is live. Because I'm, it's just a tactical pattern. Bishop h6, and then a move I didn't see here right away was rook h7 because I was so terrified I was going to lose on time. I just did this, and then I realized I can go here. And now a very common tactical pattern. Bishop in a pawn like this will always defeat a rook because the pawn can just push. I can't push it now because that's not a queen because that's guarding. So what do I do? I take the bishop. Now he loses the defense of c8, and I play c7, and even if this rook wasn't here, this would still be very strong. Now, if this rook wasn't here, black would be fine. The rook is the difference maker. The point that I'm trying to make is, in an endgame, the bishop and the pawn like that will promote against the rook. They need to be close together. And Vidit resigned here because if he takes, I make a queen, and if he goes like here, for example... I'm not that good, but I'm capable of winning rook and bishop versus five pawns. Um, the good thing is in title Tuesday that you have the extra second of bonus time, which allows you to kind of come back from a time deficit. Otherwise, it would be totally insane. Anyway, um, that was the game. That was the game. And then in the last round, uh, I played against a Prodigy, like an 18, 19 year old Grandmaster. I mean, not quite a Prodigy because a lot of Grandmasters were like 12 and 13, but a uh, very strong player from uh, Denmark, I believe uh, his last name is, I believe it's, his name is pronounced Jonas Bier, I hope I'm getting that name correct, and I was just dead, I mean that game I was just completely lost, and I got lucky, so I feel good about 8, of, eight out of 11, but next time I want to get 8 out of 11 deservedly, not with some silly, you know, swindles, um, but this is my style when I play Super Grandmasters, and it should inspire some of you, if you play someone three, 400 points higher than you, don't have fear. You, you will be nervous, but don't let that hinder you from a, from, a, from a playing standpoint. Go after them. Try to take their head off. And if you fail, at least you tried your hardest and you have something to learn for next time. So hopefully this taught you a little bit about opening preparation, uh, navigating a complex middle game and, you know, things of calc you know, calculation, all that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.